Hi everyone. In this video, I'm excited to go over a new Python open source library I created and published. I just created and published called Purview Automation. It's a uh, it's designed to be simple to use, and it makes scaling and automating Azure Purview easier. So in this phase I just finished, um, you can create, delete, scale, rollback, and automate Purview collections and delete assets and collections. It makes it a lot simpler, I think, and easier to use, and hopefully makes your life a little bit easier. Um, now, if you're not familiar with Purview, I'll put some links in the description. In the essence of time, I'll assume that you have some familiarity with Purview and what Purview collections are, and uh, let's let's get right into it. Um, so first, I have a uh, Purview Dev 1 set up here, and I have two collections, Purview Dev 1 and my collection. Now, what's the current way to create collections? Right, you can go in and actually go into the user interface here and you know manually create a collection. But if you had to create you know multiple hierarchies, right, multiple collections, um, that can get a little bit tedious to do it manually each time. Same thing with deleting collections. If you want to delete my collection, you can't do that. You have to delete all the children first, um, which can get you know, a little bit tricky too. Um, and then what if you wanted to? Let's say you had like 30 collections set up here. Um, what if you wanted to you know you wanted to use like a UAT or Prod Purview? Right, and extract and deploy those to your prod environment. So like a prod preview set up here, you actually would have to go in here and manually create them again too, which can be a little bit error prone potentially and you know tricky as well. Um, so is there like a better way? Now, one of the ways you can you can look to do it is with API, REST APIs. And REST APIs are just like you think of like a like Python, um, like pro programming languages, people to work with purview and just send out requests in a programming language to you know configure purview. So like here's the collection, create a collection REST API, and this will actually create a collection. So you can like use Python to do this. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with this, but how this can also be pretty tricky and a little bit tedious too. Um, and I'll show you why Purview Automation was created to help simplify all of this. So in my uh, Visual Studio code, I have a file called currentway.py. And I have my Azure Service Principal information set up here with my client ID, client secret, and tenant ID. If you're not sure about Azure Service Principles, I'll put another link in the description um, for them. And then um, the first way to call REST APIs is to actually acquire an access token. Uh, and if you see here, you have to know kind of how to write this script, how to parse the access token. It can get a little bit, you know, uh, tricky again with it. I'm using the request library in Python um, to, to send out these HTTP requests um, to configure Purview. And let's say we wanted to create one collection under my collection. So I have the URL here. And again, that's just that collection REST API that I just showed you before. Um, and we wanted to create, let's say one collection under here uh, called test five. Um, if you see here, everything looks okay, but you actually would get an error here. And it would say bad request. So it's not actually clear why that's happening, right? And what's actually happening is you have to make sure that you wrap the data in JSON here. So if you kind of miss that or miss a couple things like with the content type, it can give you an error. Um, and if you run this, we'll still get an error. And that's because collection test five is not a valid name. It's because there's a space in the name, right? So whenever you create a collection in Purview, two names get created. What we'll call the actual name and the friendly name. The friendly name is what you see in the UI, like for instance, my collection. But under the hood, the actual name, when you create the UI is actually a six character string. It could be something called like this. And this has to be unique across Purview. And you can't have certain name stuff in it. Like you can't have spaces in it or anything like that. Um, and so if we actually remove the space here, you would actually have to create a function to handle that if you had spaces in your names or anything like that. Um, and even if you run this, we'll still get an error because it'll say there's no collection my collection. Even though we saw that we have a collection called my collection, it's because you can't pass in friendly names to the REST API. You have to use the actual name. So to find that, we have to do the list collections API, right, to find it. So if I comment this out really quickly, we actually have to list the collections. And if I list the collections, you'll see that the friendly name is my collection, but the actual name is this NHTPYD. So we actually have to go up here and replace that here. And now this code will work. So now if we run this, uh, it'll create that one collection. But if you saw, you know, that, that's quite a bit of code and a lot of work just to create one collection. And if you had spaces right, if you had any of that, it could be a little error prone. So that's why I wrote Purview Automation to help kind of solve some of this stuff. Um, so let me show you what I mean. 
and how it works. So all you have to do first is install Purview Automation. I already have it installed here, so it'll just tell me that. Uh, and then the next step is, I'm just using the service principal information here. I simply just pass in this, you know, import this Purview Automation, and I'll put these two classes. And if you don't know what these classes are, uh, don't worry, I make this super simple, right? I pass in this, I create this auth variable. I say we want to connect with the service principal, pass in the tenant ID, client ID, and client secret. And I click this client variable, and I pass in the purview name and the auth variable. And now we're connected to purview. And make sure that the service principal or user that you've connected with, um, to be able to create and delete collections, they have to be a collection admin role in purview on that collection. Or to delete assets, they have to be the data curator role. Um, now, since we're connected, and my service principal has that access, I can now list collections. So let's see, preprint pre equals true. And this is just a, like a, a nice clean way of showing you um, the collections. So if I do that, we already have um, all the collections now that we can see that we have access to. Um, now, what if you wanted only the names, right? You can also do this, only the names, and this will give you just the actual name the friendly name and the parent collection. So it's a little bit cleaner of a list instead of all that system data stuff. It's just the actual names, friendly names, and everything there. Um, now, what about creating collections? That's super simple too. We can just create collections like this and we can put what the start collection is. So we want to create a collection under my collection. And then the collection names, right? We can just put, uh, let's just do test seven, right? And if you see, I have a space here. And what's nice about Purview Automation, you, you can pass in friendly names or actual names. It'll accept both. So it makes life a lot simpler when, when doing it. And if you see here, it handled the name under the hood and test seven was created. So if we go back into Purview here and refresh Purview, you'll see that test seven was created under, was created under my collection. And now, What if you wanted to create multiple collections, right? We can do, you can just pass in a list. So we could do this, uh, we can do random collection, right? You can pass in multiple, you know, if you want to, um, you can run that and that will create it. And if you see it only created one because it saw that test seven already existed. So this is actually item potent, meaning that if I run this again, it's not gonna do anything because it saw that both of these collections were already created, which is, which is really, really nice. Now, what about hierarchies, right? That's really simple too. So let's pick, um, let's say we wanna create a hierarchy under that new collection we just created. Then to create a hierarchy, simply pass in either a string or a list for multiple hierarchies, just like I showed you there. Um, let's call this sub higher, higher one. You put this forward slash. This forward slash just means that we're creating sub collections. So this just means that sub higher two is gonna be a sub collection under sub higher one sub higher, let's say three here, this is gonna be a sub collection under sub higher two. So if you run this, you'll see that those were just created. So if we go back into purview and refresh, you'll see that they were all created under the random collection there, which is perfect. Now, what about deleting collections? That's really simple too. You can delete collections, just pass in the name. Let's pass in test seven. Again, you can pass in a list as well if you want to create multiple collections or delete multiple collections. Um, and you can do that, you know, under the hood, right? So test seven was just deleted. So if you go back into purview and refresh, you'll see that last one there, test seven was deleted. Um, again, you can pass in a list for those. Now, what if you want to delete hierarchies, right? Like what if you want to delete all the collections under random collection instead of having to, you know, individually delete each one? That's also very, very easy as well. We can do client.delete collections recursively. We can pass in a uh, random collection. This will delete all the children and all of their children under random collection, just like that. So you can see it just deleted all those collections. So if I were to refresh here, all the collections under random collection will now be deleted. Um, which is perfect. Now, if you also wanted to delete random collection along with the children when you do this, you can just put this in as true. This will also delete the random collection as well. Um, now, what we did notice is that 
And delete collections are destructive, right? What if you wanted a way to be able to recreate or rebuild exactly what you deleted if you made a mistake, or if you wanted to save them in like a notepad for different versions, or you know, recreate things later on, you know, if you wanted to save those for later use. Um, what you can actually do is, if you want to delete all the collections under my collection, you can use this safe delete, and you pass in the name, and uh, I'm passing in client here, and this is just the name of this variable that you used to create, you know, to, to configure purview here. So this was like per, you just put in per here. And now what this will do, this will actually output, this will delete the collections, but also output the exact script needed to recreate that entire hierarchy. Um, so this can be done under multiple hierarchies, however you wanted to do it. So if you see here, all those collections were deleted. So if we go back into purview, all those collections were deleted, but with this safe delete, now all I have to do is just copy that code, paste it in here, and then run this. And this will recreate the exact same actual names and friendly names that we had. So now if we refresh, everything was just recreated. So you could store this for different versions later on or you know whatever you wanted to do. Um, now what about deleting assets, right? I have a, my collection has four assets here. Um, that's really simple as well. So you can just you can just delete collection assets, simply pass in the name, run this, and then it will delete um, all of the assets in my collection, right? So now if we refresh, it's super quick. So it did that. Now, what if you have, let's say you want to delete all the collections under my collection. But let's say some of these had assets as well in them. Instead of having to go in and delete assets as well and, and do all that, you can actually, um, and you can pass in a list here as well for multiple you know, collections too. Um, but if you wanted to delete collections and if there's assets, delete all the, all the assets first and then delete to the collections, you can just do like something like this. My collection and then delete assets, you can put to true. So what this will do is if there's any assets in the collections, it will delete the assets and then also delete the collection. So it's it just saves you a couple steps. So now you'll see it's going to go through each collection there, delete all the assets, then delete the collection as well. So now if you refresh purview, all the assets have been deleted in those collections and all those collections were deleted too. So uh, it's super, super, super simple. Now, um, let's say, um, I'll show you one more thing we can do too. So if you want to, let's say, create collections here. Let's start under my collection again. Let's create another hierarchy here. Let's just call it um, like test one, uh, let's see, test five, test six, test seven. Now, what if you did this and you had all of your, you know, 30 collections or however many hierarchies you had here, and you wanted to extract the collections and deploy them to your production, right, or to your other, you know, environment there. Um, and actually, I'll get rid of this one so you can see exactly what it does. So I just have my preview, my prod preview set up here, and we have this one. Let's say we want to take all the collections here under my collection and extract and deploy those to our prod purview. Right? How do you do that? That's really, really simple too. So now all you do is extract collections, and I type in my collection, and this will, this will do it from that collection as well. So it'll include my collection. So now if you run this, this will give you the exact script needed to recreate all those collections. So now you can just copy this here. And if you see here, I would just change this to my prod purview. And the same service principle is set up here. Um, if you had a different service principle, you just obviously updated the information right here. Um, and then all we do is we just change the start collection from the dev to prod here, simply deploy this and run this code. It will deploy all of your collections in that new prod purview. And then it's set up and it's, the ex it's consistent across purview. So it's the same actual names under the hood and the same friendly names. So it's all consistent. Um, and again, just to make sure when you're creating or deleting collections, make sure the service principal or user is this, the collection admin and deleting assets, make sure it's the data curator on there. And yeah, um, 
you know, I hope this library is helpful. Um, if this does help you at all and you find this useful, if you wouldn't mind giving this a star in GitHub, this would help a lot. I do this for free. Um, and so if this is useful for you, um, definitely give that a star. Uh, that would definitely be appreciated. Um, and I also wrote full documentation on everything here. So there's other stuff I didn't go over that you can do or to handle like edge cases or multiple duplicate friendly names, a whole tutorial guide. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And you can also find it in the full documentation as well. And yeah, I hope this uh, was helpful. Um, yeah, and I hope you uh, enjoy it. So uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time.